I take this bass mount right here, I could just mount this bait in front of it. And now we have the classic largemouth chasing a bluegill. It's that good. It's absolutely incredible. Welcome back everybody to the world's worst fishing. I'm Chris Jones. We have um, a challenge of a video today. Most of the time I say exciting video or uh, something, something to that effect. And uh, I hope this one will be exciting too, but not going to be exciting for me. We are trying to color match um, one of my favorite lure painters and artists. Yeah, um, I'm sure you've seen the thumbnail, thumbnail by now, so I either got it or I didn't. But um, we've got a heck of a challenge today, a real cup tilting, color building, layering, blending challenge. Let's take a look. We are trying to do a custom trashy bass bluegill in plastic this is going to take everything we've got okay so before we kill ourselves trying to do that um, i did want to make another uh mention of the made to cast podcast um our episode with brent is now up it's this one right here <laughs> beanie weenies in the pursuit of challenge with chris jones um yeah had a blast it's about an hour and a half long so uh you know if, if you're a fan of lure making in general and um you know are interested in podcast material definitely check out the made to cast podcast um like i said he's got five episodes now all of them are great um i think i was the third soft plastic guy and then there's been two hard bait guys so uh definitely check it out that is the made to cast fishing podcast and uh here we go all right, so there it is. That is a trashy bass bluegill. And actually, while we're uh, looking at this thing, let me pull up his his Instagram just to give him a proper uh, a proper shout out. Let me find him here. Tra here we go. Right there, trashy bass swim baits. Okay, right there. Look at this stuff. Absolutely amazing 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 yeah a six inch gill right there yeah about a ninety five hundred dollar value he also does incredible shads i mean this yeah this this dude's the real deal uh, i've been a big fan of his uh patterns for quite some time now and uh i even actually tried to color match one one of them i don't remember remember exactly which one it was but this was the result so this is kind of what we're going to be trying to do again today is a hand poured swim bait now obviously you know this mold is, is shaped more like a shad and a shiner it doesn't have a bluegill shape but you can do bluegill colors in it nonetheless okay so with a combination of those mixing you know pink orange yellow <clears throat> brown some green pumpkin in the back and of course black i think we can kind of take those and get something like that um <laughs> It's gonna be ridiculous. Also, here's some, some recent swim bait work right there. Yeah, really cool effect there. Let me know in the comments below if y'all want the recipe for that one. All right, so we have some uh, dead on plastic here. That's the craw tube blend. Um, no surprise there, but we need faint black striping. Okay, so not near as saturated as I would normally do things. So let's start with four drops. Kind of see where that gets us. And then we'll kind of do a drizzle test, for lack of a better terminology, on the mold cavity. Just to see if if we think that the black stripes are, are going to even show up. Yeah, that's really faint. See that? We need a little bit more. Alright, so a little bit more here. One, two, three, four. We'll double it. Okay. Okay see where that gets us you know i'm looking at the rest of this thing the rest of the colors i'll probably mix up not as carefully and kind of build them the way i normally do but i know that the way that i normally layer black would be too saturated for this for this particular pattern okay that's looking a little a little closer all right here we go nothing new this is uh these are all of our skin pouring techniques as we like to call them and uh, we're basically just going to start with some vertical barring um, we're going to do the vertical bars a little bit different than the ones on the on the actual bait i just know how plastic behaves you can see the ones here on the bottom of the bait they start wide and they actually narrow as they go up 
the way that I like to pour plastic and just the way that I know that the mold is going to do things, I'm probably going to do it opposite. You know, you I guess you could technically start, you know, here in the bottom where it's a little wider, right? And then kind of angle it up, okay? So now see how we sort of have that upside down triangle effect, right? Just like that. However, even though I could do that, I want to kind of stick with the, I, I guess, doing it the way that I like to do it because I know how it's going to turn out, I guess, ultimately. So we're going to kind of do it, we're going to kind of do it the way that, that I always do it. And that's basically like that, kind of doing it downward. I just think it looks better in the mold and I kind of know how it turns out. Um, so, you know, we're not trying to do things, you know, the, obviously, you know, the goal is to, is to capture this color profile to match this in plastic. And sometimes plastic, you know, is gonna look different. It's a completely different medium than paint. And uh, that's part of the charm is that it's gonna have its own vibe. You know, it's, it's not gonna look just like the paint because it's kind of not really supposed to. So anyway, you could also uh, say that this is very much like how you build a perch. You know, lots of vertical barring. So that's kind of what we're gonna go with here. And we'll maybe do one more towards the back. Something like that, all right? Just to kind of capture that vertical barring. All right, so now we're working on the green pumpkin and uh, it's looking pretty good. That's just a few drops of uh, green pumpkin 109. The, the good old Lure Works green pumpkin, that's, uh, that's the green pumpkin that I've used the most. We're gonna darken it just a smidge with a drop of black. There's our drop of black. See where that gets us here because we want a little bit more saturation. And uh, the black will help with that. You can also add white to really thicken stuff up. You know, white's obviously going to lighten up the color. But let's kind of see, see what we've got here. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good looking shade. All right, so there's the green pumpkin in the head. So that's kind of what we're working on now. And if you look at this bait, you can kind of see he's gotten an amazing shaded scaling pattern with his airbrush, right? All the scales are kind of outlined in black. Well, of course we can't paint uh, pour that. So what we can do to sort of get that black texture effect, what I like to do is just add a little bit of black flake, just like uh, pepper on some food, right? A little bit of seasoning and um, just have that kind of sparsely throughout the bait. Okay, so just kind of looking at this thing, I need the green pumpkin sort of right up in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is sort of splotch the plastic in, okay? Just sort of all up here into this head section. All right. Wait, kind of kind of stops right up in there. I think that's about where we need it. Just sort of uh, looking at where it is, you know, it's gonna kind of fade into that head, that front head section there. So that's pretty much it. So again, just gonna kinda, just gonna kinda splotch it along maybe to about there. All right. All right, now it's time to build the orange. So we went ahead and put, I believe that was four drops of just straight dead on orange. My absolute favorite orange, by the way. And the way that we kind of turn it into this burnt orange here in the back, right? There's a little bit more on this side. Yeah, so you can see more of that burnt orange on that side. So the way that we get that is by adding a little bit of black. All right, let's see where that takes us. That'll kind of burnt orange it up. Yeah. Immediately changes it, right? That's almost exactly what we want. However, it may just be a trick of all the layers of paint playing on me, but it looks a little green pumpkin-y too. So we're actually gonna add a little bit of green pumpkin to our burnt orange and just kind of see where that takes us. You know, there are no rules to color building. 
and I think any number of, uh, of options will work to get a desired effect, all right? That ain't half bad. It might need to be actually a little more orange now that we've just kind of dulled that orange down a bit. We're going to add another drop. See where that takes us. Very, very in-depth stuff today. You know, we're going to be showing a lot of color building and just sort of what my mindset is along the way while I'm trying to figure this out. You know, this is not something that I have practiced. I have zero experience with this pattern. Mm, darker. It needs more black. That looks a little bit too yellow. So we're really going to touch it up here. Two drops of black. See if that helps us. If not, we might even have to go with a drop of red just to make it look not quite so yellow, if that makes sense. So we're uh, going to get that mixed in. All right. Now let's throw a drop of orange on there. Yeah, as you can see, that's a lot closer. All right, here we go. So same thing with the orange. We're just going to kind of splotch it sort of from right here on up to where that green pumpkin is. Those two colors are going to kind of jam together, just like that. So, we look at our example. We kind of have the burnt orange, right? Starting up the back, flowing into that green pumpkin. And there it is from the inverse. So that's kind of what we're thinking here. Okay, there's what we have. Oops, do not want to mess up this bait. But again, there is the target. Time for the pink. All right, now let's try to build the pink. And uh, we're going to uh, use, you guessed it, pink for our pink. So this is like the original Dead On Neo pink. Pretty sure they still offer this color. This is just the old school bottle because um, I haven't run out yet. So now, you know, they have a couple Neo colors. They have like a Neo orange, a Neo magenta, some really, really cool things. Ugh. All right. So that's the kind of pink that we're going for there. You can see it's actually got a lot of that orange in it, at least where, where it blends. Um, so what we're going to do is sort of take that as our base. Okay, but then we're going to maybe... We're maybe going to dumb it down a little bit. Take, take the pink edge off with like a drop of brown. I like what brown does to pink in, in, in terms of just taking the edge off of the pink and making it look a little bit more natural, okay? So now we have this going on. Okay which that's not saturated enough, but I think we're on, I think we're on the right track there. So what we're gonna do, is so we're gonna go ahead, add a few more drops of pink, really, really get things saturated up. <clears throat> do another drop of brown there. There again, lots of touch and go here with, with the color building today. If anyone just likes to see me build colors, this is the video for you. Yeah, I think we're looking all right there. Okay, let's try this again. We may actually have to add a little bit of white to brighten it up, but that sort of, yeah, boy, that's, that's really, really close. All right, now we're basically going to fill in gaps, okay? We're gonna start here and just go kind of over that and just sort of fill in some of that space, just like that. We're basically doing more vertical barring, but we're doing them real wide to just kind of fill in these gaps, okay, so that we have something like that. All right, one more here. Then maybe a smidge right there in the back, okay? All right. Sorry if lighting's a little weird. I have to kind of change the angles as I pour the plastic. All right, and then we'll maybe do a real thin strip right there along that first uh, <clears throat> along that first um, bar. Oops. Okay. 
So now you can just kind of see things starting to come together a little bit. Okay, this might not suck, you guys. It's good. It's, I mean, this 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 is tough. There's a lot of really really advanced color layering here, and you know, in just in my private messages uh, with him, he's like, yeah, you know, I just kind of take whatever colors I think look good and turn them into a bluegill, and I'm like, yeah, right. This is serious stuff. So <laughs> he's uh, if if this is easy for him, then Lord have mercy on the rest of us. Okay, filling in the gap. I might add a little bit to that one. Okay, fill in the gap. Just a little bit there. Yeah, a little bit there. Okay, yeah. All right, so we went ahead and finished them out, and basically what we did was we put a little bit of that pink that you see there up in the front, and then we took a real light mixture of orange and yellow, that right there, and just kind of filled it in along the bottom, because as you see here, it has that, um, well, yeah, there it is, has that faint orange belly. So that is kind of starting to look right, at least the best we can do it here, our first attempt on video. So, you know, this may be one of those colors that takes several attempts to really get it. I mean, that is, you know, I mean, it, it makes me think, at what point does this just become taxidermy? It's so realistic than bait making. All right, molds are on the hot plate. So we've set it to 320 degrees approximately, and we are heating up. So uh, we're going to basically do a white pearl belly, of course, because if we look in our example, of course, you know, there's white pearl on the bottom. Some of this white pearl in here, we won't really get that effect, but that's okay. I, uh, I think what we've done is going to look pretty much like the soft plastic counterpart to that pattern, and I'm really excited to see it. Um, and then sort of a smoke charcoal gray top. That way we can sort of get this black tail effect. All right, white pearl belly. I'm going to do one for you here on camera, best I can. There we go. Want to pour it as high up as we can, pretty much. All right, let's top one of these bad boys off. Nice charcoal gray. Here we go. Hopefully that uh, white pearl layer is set up enough. I think it is. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Just like that, you guys. All right, we've got rain outside and laundry noise in the background, but I don't care. The molds are ready. Let's see how we did. Drum roll, please. All right. Still a little, woo, still a little warm. But let's see if we can get it to come out on, on the uh, bottom side, hopefully. We'll just kind of open it, yes, and see what happens. Check it out. There it is, y'all. Again, sorry for the laundry noise. Yeah, so you can kind of see the burnt orange there in the back. Whew, hold on, I'm going to have to, going to have to put on a glove. We are still hot yeah so you can see the green pumpkin up in the front really excited to see that there obviously you know sort of our faint charcoal bars you know because again they weren't really oversaturated bars you know lovely pink colors filled in we have the bottom um sorry we have the the bottom uh, orange let's get out the example right on right on yeah so what I noticed is that the bottom where the orange is, ow, just got hooked, 
did not have sort of that black scaling effect so i didn't put any black flake in the bottom orange but yeah that's um that's really not half bad it definitely has the the overall color profile and uh i am really really excited about our results here let's get the other ones out yeah this is never what we like moisture gets in here and messes everything up luckily we're already done pouring but i uh wanted to film some some quick footage of all of these baits together outside where you can really see them so we will have to come back for that what do y'all think i think that has the vibe and i was able to find some jetson eyes that sort of match um, so this eye, I think he actually uh, arranged it facing backwards. But but um, if I can get some light on it, yeah, there we go. You can see it sort of has a bit of a gold halo around the, around the pupil. So that is the, sort of the closest effect that I had. And uh, I think that really sets it off nice. So again, that's freaking sweet. All right, everybody, we are outside. And uh, the rain kind of stopped. Yeah, the orange belly uh, looks really nice there. Yeah, some really, really cool colors. Well, there's a few drops still landing uh, oop, here and there. So, yeah, definitely a little lighter on the top there with their uh, green pumpkin. I think he does a lot of these in pearls. So, you know, there's, there's a sort of that bright effect there that I didn't quite capture. Um, in person, I don't know how well it's coming through on camera. I can see my green pumpkin really, really well. It's uh, just not quite as bright as the top there. So there's there's something else that he's putting in his paint, probably a pearl um, that maybe I should have thought about. But uh, man, really, really pretty stuff. And uh, nothing ever looks better than it does in real sunlight. Real quick, just want to show you all some recent work. We took one of our snake patterns in the uh, eight inch uh, rip worm there looking good and then uh, did sort of like a nice olive brown and blue sort of uh, uh, layered pattern there with some nice uh, sort of yellow tips there so anyways we've been uh, trying to hit it hardcore with practicing our layering in the worms not just the swim baits all right yeah I'm digging it I am digging it you guys Hope y'all have enjoyed a very, very in-depth, very complicated, very challenging uh, hand-pouring journey here. Um, what an awesome bait. Thanks again to Trashy Bass Swim Baits for sending this to me. Uh, this is one of my prize pieces, so why aren't we in focus? Anyway, yeah, could not be happier. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Oh, you know, all that YouTube stuff.